by now you've probably seen this image. These are the four leaked legendary skins for the Year of the Rooster event. These are from the Chinese Overwatch team. This is an unintentional leak, but we've got hold of the image. Now, what actually is going on in this picture? Well, there is loads of information I don't think a lot of people have picked up on. I think what this is showing us here is the new PvE event is going to be Journey to the West, which is a very famous traditional Chinese story. So in this video, I'm going to explain what each of these skins are, how they relate to Journey of the West, and why I think this is a PvE event. And it's if it is, I'm going to absolutely love it. Oh my god. So just what is Journey to the West? Well, it's a very famous Chinese novel in which a Tang Dynasty Buddhist monk, uh, whose name is, and get ready for this because I will absolutely butcher it, Huswan Sang? Huswan Sang? Um, he travels to the western regions. Now, that is basically Central Asia and India to obtain Buddhist sacred texts, which are obviously called sutras. And then he returns after much trials and suffering. Now, trials and suffering, probably what the event is going to be, uh, but we'll get onto that towards the end of the video. Gautama Buddha gave this task to the monk and provided him with three protectors who agreed to help him as an atonement for their sins. These disciples are Sun Wukong, which is the Winston skin, Zhuo Baji, which I've totally butchered, that is the pig monster thing, that is basically Roadhog skin, and Sha Wujing, which is the Reinhardt skin, which is like a type of um, river monster kind of chap. Uh, and together with the Dragon Prince, who acts as Zhao Swang Steed, a white horse. Now, remember, I can't speak Chinese, so I've butchered a lot of these names. But let's go into more detail on each of these characters and what they actually are. First up, we've got Zen Yarta. Now, let's take a look at this, because he is Huswan Sang, <laughs> which, again, I'm butchering. I know I am. Uh, I can't speak Chinese, so again, apologies for that. Uh, and he is the main character. He's the leader of the, this kind of band of heroes who are going out there to recover these sacred Buddhist scriptures. Now... I think there are three that they're trying to collect, possibly, but there's obviously three people in his team as well, four including him. And they have to go through various trials, and he's sort of like the leader of the gang. He keeps them together. He's the one who's been sent on this sort of, I guess, holy mission by Gautama Buddha, and he's going to bring back these documents. And I think that's probably what the event's going to be, where we kind of have to work as this four-man team against various trials, which will probably involve other Overwatch heroes and stuff like that. So that's all Zen really is. Like, he's kind of like the most basic character, if you think of it, it, kind of in a simplistic way. He's not got any kind of fancy abilities and fancy stuff that he does. He's just the leader of the team. He's also actually known as Tang Seng as well, which is actually easier than me saying Huswan Seng. So he, it's probably going to be referred to as the Zen Yata Tang Seng skin, because I think most people are going to find it very difficult to say Huswan Seng, if that's even how it's pronounced. Winston. Ah, yes, this is the Sun Wukong skin. Now, this has been teased on Echo Point Antarctica because you can see, or Echo Point rather, Echo Point, wh whatever the hell it's called, the Antarctic 1v1 map. On there, there is like a childish drawing of Sun Wukong. Now, Blizzard do this. They tease us with skins. They teased us with the May skin and with the Diva skin in the Christmas update for this event. So, like, there were the little sprays, the little bauble sprays. So, they, they do this kind of stuff. So, it was kind of a good guess that we would get a Sun Wukong skin. I mean, obviously, we've just got a Winston skin, so we're going to get another Winston skin. It's like, okay, whatever. I guess you could say the same with, like, pretty much all of these heroes, but that's actually another video, so let's not talk about that now. But what the hell is Sun Wukong? Well, he's the Monkey King, right? If you played League of Legends, yeah, you've seen him. If you played Dota 2, yeah, you've seen him. He's in loads of games, right? Monkey King, very big in Chinese folklore, yes, and all of that stuff. Thing is, though, he possesses immense strength. You see, he's apparently able to lift 7,960 kilograms or 17,550 pounds. Holy hell. Um, yeah. He's also extremely fast as well. And get this. He can travel at 21,000 kilometers in one somersault. Now, I know Winston can jump pretty high, but I don't think he can jump, like, halfway around the world. But apparently Sun Wukong can. <laughs> He also knows 72 transformations, which, which allow him to transform into various animals and objects. However, he is troubled in transforming into other forms due to the accompanying incomplete transformation of his tail. So his tail always remains whatever form that he's in. <laughs> Ridiculous. Sun Wukong is a very skilled fighter capable of holding his own against the best warriors of heaven. Each of his hairs possess magical properties, which, I mean, if he's a monkey, what the hell? He's got a lot of magical properties going on here. Capable of being transformed into clones of the Monkey King himself. So I think in League of Legends, he clones himself. Maybe he doesn't Dota. I'm not sure. Don't play Dota. <laughs> but it's a bit ridiculous. Um, he's also known to command wind. 
Uh, he can kind of command water. He can conjure project protective circles against demons. That's Winston's bubble, right? And freeze humans, demons, and gods alike. So basically, he's absolutely, like, like, he's mental. He's like, he's absolutely mental. But he's also got a ridiculous weapon. This is a Ruji Zhengu Bang. I think that's how it's pronounced. Again, my pronunciation of Chinese stuff is terrible. Uh, it's a massive staff which you can smash your brains in with, but apparently you can also hide it inside his ear. So it changes size, <laughs> which is like, I mean, obviously it's Winston, so it's going to fire electricity out in Overwatch, you would imagine. It would just be like a melee weapon. That would be absolutely ridiculous if it was. But apparently this first appeared in the chapter of the book when the Monkey King goes to, goes to like an underwater kingdom of Owl Gwang. Uh, this is apparently where the Dragon King of the East Sea lives. He was looking for a weapon and, well, he basically stole it off him, which is uh, a, a bit ridiculous. Apparently it was initially a, uh, a like a pillar of black iron 20 feet in height and he just sort of stole it. And then because he's magical, he turned it into this fancy weapon. Ridiculous. Next up, we've got Roadhog. This is Zuhi Baji. I've totally pronounced that wrong again. But um, he's one of the helpers, obviously, for, uh, for big man Zenyatta on his mission to get these texts back. Uh, and it kind of means swine. But it, this kind of really doesn't make sense in English to a sense. But it means swine ate precepts. That's what his name means. So swine, obviously, you know, pig related. Uh, Buddhist scholars consider that both expressions are related to Silma Parimata. Now, again, I've totally butchered that, um, which basically means pigsy or pig. So, yeah, swine, pig, pigskin, roadhog, he's a pig. It all makes sense, right? He would be this character. But the thing is, he's a very complex character in the novels. He looks like a terrible monster. He's part human, he's part pig. And he often gets his companions into trouble with his laziness, his gluttony. Uh, <laughs> he actually likes chasing after the women as well, which is uh, something he probably shouldn't be doing if he looks like he does, which is quite bad. Uh, he's also jealous of the Monkey King, which also isn't great. And he always tries to bring him down. In the original Chinese novel, he's called Daizaz. Again, I've totally butchered this, which means idiot. So the rest of the team think he's a bit of an idiot. Um, yeah, he's a pig man, so nobody really likes him. And he's not too clever, which is, is not nice. And he doesn't like Winston, and he wants to bring the team down, which is kind of crazy why you would take this guy on a mission with you. Apparently, other gods and heavenly beings refer to him as a heavenly tumbleweed. So he just doesn't really do anything. He just blows by and, and yeah... Nobody cares, right? But what about his weapon? Well, his weapon is the nine tooth spike rake, which will most definitely be his hook, right? When it comes to Overwatch. Uh, and this is a, well, it's a nine tooth rake, which you, you rake people with. I said rake, chat. I said rake. And um, viewers, oh, 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 yes, rake. Um, yeah, so it's, that'll be his hook, I think. Pretty simple. So what about Reinhardt? Well, I think he is Wu Jing, who was originally a general in heaven. And this skin is absolutely quite ridiculously detailed as well. We'll get onto that in a second, though. More specifically, though, he was a curtain-lifting general. In a fit of rage, though, he destroyed a valuable vase. And other sources mention that he did this unintentionally because he's a bit of an idiot. In fact, they kind of also refer to him as a bit of a, bit of a thick guy. You know, he's not too clever as well. Anyway, he was punished by the Jade Emperor, who had him struck 800 times with a rod, which seems a bit excessive, and exiled to Earth, where he can live with the plebs. However, when he gets to Earth, he is reincarnated as a terrible, man-eating sand demon. Yes, indeed. There, he lived in the Alina Shua, I've totally butchered that again, which is Flowing Sand River, or Quicksand River. The, the modern name for this is the Kaidu River. As punishment, every day, seven flying swords sent from heaven would stab him in the chest before flying off. As a result, he had to live in the river to avoid the punishment, which seems kind of harsh. Now, this is where it gets super interesting, because if we look at this skin, Wu Jing's appearance was rather ghastly. He had a red beard. Yeah, he's got a bit of a bit of a tosh going on there, but a bit of a beard. Uh, he, was, he was partially bald and all of that. We don't care, because he's got a helmet on. It's Reinhardt. And he had a necklace of nine skulls, which is super interesting because if you look at the necklace he's got on, it has nine orbs around it. Now, there's not skulls there, which is because I think of um, censorship reasons in China. You can't show skeletons and skulls. I I'm sure there was some problem with Dota had an issue with that and League of Legends did and, and things like that. So I'm pretty sure um, that's why we're not seeing skulls, like any kind of skull iconography going on. But what is the interesting tale about this? Well, apparently an earlier group of nine monks on a pilgrimage to the west to the scriptures met their ends at well met their end even even at the hands of Wu Jing despite their pleas for mercy he just devoured them 
He sucked the marrow from their bones, so he sounds like a nice guy, and threw their skulls into the river. However, unlike his other victims, whose bones sank to the bottom, uh, the skulls of the monks floated. This fascinated and delighted Wu Jing, naturally as it would, floating skulls that would delight anybody, who strung them on a rope and played with them whenever he was bored. So he's an absolute madman. You, you clearly want this guy on your team. So, that explains what's going on with all of these skins, but it also explains that a very strong theme for the Year of the Rooster event is this Journey to the West Tale. So, what I'm hoping happens as a result of this is we get this sort of PvE mission that we go on. Four-player co-op where we have to battle through various demons and such, and we collect these uh, scriptures. Now, I think that is a pretty good shout. Last event, which was the Winter of Wonderland event, I wanted a PvE event as well because of the success of the Junkensteins event. Instead, we got a pretty basic, in terms of functionality and, and the, way it, the way it played, snowball fight, which it was fun, but it wasn't Junkenstein's Revenge. I'm hoping this event does give us this sort of journey that we go on because we know they can do this. With Junkenstein's Revenge, they had the full narration. This would work extremely well for this, and I think... This is probably what Blizzard are interested in. It will resonate really well with the Asian audience, especially the Chinese audience, because it'll be like, wow, they're telling us a story here. We're getting to play through this. It's almost like being able to play Macbeth or some sort of Shakespeare novel to an English person, I guess, but with, with, with a Chinese folklore tale, which is like one of their most popular tales, it just makes sense. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I think we're onto something with this, and we generally get really good with predicting what's going to happen. So, yeah, do let me know what you think about this in the comments below, and I will definitely be getting that Reinhardt skin. It looks so nice to me, that skin does. Holy hell. In fact, they all look quite nice, but again, like I said earlier on in the video, there's a little bit of a debate, isn't there, between who actually gets new legendary skins, because it seems that Blizzard tends to favour a few heroes. <coughs> Roadhog. <coughs> Reinhardt's got about 30 legendary skins at this point. Oh my god. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Salos. This is Unit Lost. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, subscribe to the channel, like the video, follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming, and I'll catch you next time. Toodaloo.